Today's video brought to you by Shillcoin, the new 2018 startup ICO that runs off of the tiers of investors that listen to shillers. Shillcoin offers new blockchain technology that keeps all shill tweets, Instagram posts, and Telegram chats on the blockchain. And we are a legitimate company. Just ask John McAfee. Welcome to your daily crypto news. So before we go any further, go ahead, stop what you're doing, hit that like button. Yes, you, I'm talking to you. Make sure you hit that button. The more people that like this video, the more people will get to see this video and the more we can get the word out about cryptocurrency. So let's take a look at the markets. A lot of green today on coinmarketcap.com. The market cap right now is $263 billion. Uh, we did get down a little lower than that yesterday, but we have bounced just a tiny bit. But, you know, unfortunately, the bounces aren't quite as high as they were. And so every time we hit a bounce, we're just getting back to the number that depressed us only a few days earlier. <laughs> but hey, we got to start somewhere, right? So let's take a look at the market cap here. Uh, Bitcoin up 6%, Ethereum up 5%, Ripple up 5%, a lot of good numbers. Stellar up 10.5%. There was maybe some good news over the weekend. If you know a little bit more about that, go ahead and drop us a comment below for Stellar. As you can see, you know, we got to go down quite a bit until we get to red. Tether doesn't even really count, so uh, it's down 0.25%. So we really got to go really far down the list. We don't have any red until you get down to number 49 at Veritasium. So let's take a look at the biggest winners of the day, the biggest winners of the day, Storage Coin. I'm very interested in this coin. I've been hearing a lot about it lately. I think we may do a review on that very soon. Uh, if you'd like to see that, go ahead and let us know. Drop us a comment. It had quite a spike yesterday. VeChain as well had a spike. VeChain is uh, another project that I really like. Uh, we actually have a music video coming out soon that shouts out VeChain, so be on the lookout for that, a BitBoy uh, music video. So uh, BitShares, XPA, which is XPlay, we talked about that a few days ago, our chain. Uh, you know, it looks like we have two chains in the top 10 of gainers. So, um, you know, I think there was a lot of good, a lot of good increases yesterday. Let's look at the losers of the day. If we look at the losers of the day, like I said, Veritasium was the biggest loser. We only have five losers, and uh, only four of them actually uh, count, because I don't count Tether. And uh, Dropal and uh, Ravain are only down less than 1%. So almost everything's up right now. But like I mentioned earlier, just because it's up, eh, it's not too much to celebrate. we still got a long ways to go. All right, let's jump right into the news. So a story serviced over the weekend that actually has given out the amount that John McAfee, some of you guys may pronounce it McAfee, but even though phonetically it looks different, it is McAfee, uh, he charges 105 k $105,000 per promotional crypto tweet. So he's really carved out a space for him. Uh, and I think a lot of us would probably refer to him as the biggest shiller out there right now. Uh, evidence by the amount he's charging. If somebody's charging $105,000 for a tweet and someone's willing to pay it, you got to think, it doesn't matter how bad the coin is, he's going to make it sound good because he's getting a big return on his investment, even if investors aren't. So he came out with this tweet and it says, we finally wrote down how our promotional tweets work. It's self-aggrandizing and ego struggling for us. However, if you're playing an ICO, trying to boost a coin or want to shine a light on your latest project, you should overlook our swollen egos and see McAfeeCryptoTeam.com. So, you know, you almost have to really embrace and uh, you got to respect this guy coming out. He's not only is he the biggest coin shiller, uh, shiller but he's proud of it. So there's something about that that you got to respect that at least he's being real, you know, like, hey, we got big egos. Uh, but you know what? If you got an ICO, we're the way to go. Um, so, I you know, how do I feel about John McAfee? I, I don't know. He's such a character. You know, he's such a character and he's brought such 
a spotlight to cryptocurrency since he really started on board in December in terms of shilling, if you will. But yet, you know, is he good for investors? Eh, probably not. I, I wouldn't listen to what he says about a cryptocurrency, especially knowing he's getting paid for it. So we just did a review on Ravencoin. You guys should check it out. And I don't own any Ravencoin. You know, right now I'm very interested in it. I'm interested in starting to mine it and do some different things. But I'm not showing you guys a coin because I own it. And if I do own a coin, I'm very outright with you guys. I say, look, I own Walton Chain. That's something I really like. It's a project I believe in. Neo, Nano, Funfair. Those are some ones that I own. That I, But I own them because I believe in them. But if, if I'm telling you guys about these projects, I'm going to tell you I own them. With John McAfee, it's all promotional. So, you know, I wouldn't pay $105,000. I don't have $105,000 to pay. Uh you know, for a tweet, I wouldn't do it if I were an ICO uh, because, you know, you're immediately starting off in the spammy category if you pay him to promote one of your tweets, and everyone knows it's promotional. So, anyways, just kind of a fun story uh, to, to know what he's making, and uh, going forward, I wouldn't listen to anything he says, but yet I still kind of like following him just as a character in crypto. So I came across this article that talks about despite Bitcoin price drop, adoption is still strong in Japan and South Korea. And it seems like Asia is really leading the charge for adoption with Bitcoin and with all cryptocurrencies. And in the rest of the world, in Europe, the United States, uh, other places, I think Africa actually, uh, you know, is seeing some adoption. I think that's due to the oppressive governments there and you know, the people were really clamoring for a way to kind of break out of that. So I think Africa is another prime candidate for adoption. But, you know, in the rest of the world, adoption is stalling. And I think that has a lot to do with why the price hasn't been able to stabilize. But I wanted to let you guys know, I've been thinking a lot about adoption and what that looks like for the world and what that would mean for the price of Bitcoin. So I'm going to try to break this down for you. The the way that I came up with it in my head. And if you guys believe differently, drop us a comment below and let us know if you think my math is wrong on this. But, you know, all it would take, so we've been talking about Bitcoin price, right? Where can it go? A lot of people think it might go to 200,000. A lot of people think it may drop back down to below 1,000. But what would it look like for, if the total supply was out, right? So we got 21 million coins. You know, what would adoption look like proportionally to the price of Bitcoin? Well, you know, there's about $84 trillion total in the world. That's all currencies. That's just the total amount of money that is flowing around. I found that on a graphic. Maybe I can find it somewhere and post it here. I don't know how accurate it is. I know it's probably pretty close to accurate. Uh, You know, maybe it's 30% off, maybe it's 60 trillion, but we're just going to go with the number $84 trillion. And the more that we read stories like this about how adoption in Japan and South Korea are strong, that's great news for the price. Because if you have $84 trillion in the world and you have 21 million bitcoins in total supply, and let's say adoption is strong and 25% of the world is using bitcoin. So 25% of $84 trillion is is $21 trillion. So if $21 trillion were in cryptocurrency, okay, then that would mean the price of each Bitcoin. Now, of course, it would have to be Bitcoin. Let's just say 25% were using Bitcoin. Let's say it does become the the major currency of 25% of the world. Then each Bitcoin would be worth $1 million. So that's the math. That's how we get there is 25% uh, of 84 trillion is 21 trillion. There's 21 million Bitcoin in total supply. That means that if each Bitcoin were worth a million dollars, that would be 21 trillion dollars. So, wh- what is a barrier from getting that to happen? I would probably say the biggest barrier right now to making that happen is India. India has so much of the world's population, and they're not strong on cryptocurrency right now. I think there are a lot of people there that are interested in it. The government is not interested in, you know, letting that flourish. Uh, so, I mean, big, big surprise, you know, there. Round one, fight! But if India and China alone were were to adopt Bitcoin, which I think for right now, China's a long shot in the, in the 
you know, near future as well as India. But if just those two countries alone were to adopt Bitcoin, then that would probably be about 25% of the world's population, if not a little bit more. So when we have stories like Japan and South Korea adopting cryptocurrency and, and starting to, you know, th those two countries, I would say, are leading the charge. Uh, we have, an, uh, you know, some other players in the game, New Zealand, Malta, especially with Binance coming there. But, you know, Japan and Korea are huge because if they can adopt, and who knows, we may see the toppling of the North Korean uh, dictatorship at some point in the next five, ten years, and then maybe that would open up North Korea as well. And then you've got both of those countries, or all technically it would be all three of those countries, and then you also have China right next to them. That China may feel some pressure also. So, you know, we, we live in this world where, you know, it seems like it would be impossible for uh, something like that to happen in the next few years just because of our current system. But we're on such uh, exponential technological growth. You know, if you look at all of the technology that was made before, say, 1990, and then look at the technology from 1990 to now, the exponential rate at which we're advancing is so high. It's so crazy that, you know, it's it's not out of the question to say that a lot of these countries may totally adopt a digital currency soon. Now, will it be Bitcoin? I don't, I don't know, but those are the numbers. That's how we can get there. So speaking of South Korea, they have announced plans to come up with a cryptocurrency tax plan by June of this year. So this is big news is a lot of these countries, you know, do not have regulation in place for cryptocurrency. And, you know, who is that bad for? That's bad for investors because you don't know where you're supposed to pay your tax. Uh, I know that I saw a video from Crypto Daily. Where are you at, Crypto Daily? Uh, you know, wish you'd come back. He, he's a big inspiration for me. I really, you know, he, he's my favorite YouTuber to watch. He hasn't made a video in a couple weeks. Uh, really love to see him get back. But he did a video where he talked about how in the UK, uh, I'm in the United States, so he's in the UK, and he talked about how, um, you know, he had to pay taxes on his gains, on his trades at the end of the year. Basically, he was getting taxed everywhere. And until we adopt some type of regulation that makes sense for, you know, ta cryptocurrency tax, then we're all going to be getting screwed left and right based on whatever our country decides to do, our individual country that we may be from. So I think that this plan for South Korea, this announcement is really big. I think that this is going to help, you know, continue to streamline cryptocurrency into the mainstream and legitimize it. Because, you know, like, let's take online gambling games in the United States. We're In the United States, we're banned from doing online gambling. So when you're betting offshore, you know, you're not supposed to be able to bring that money in and get taxed on it. So what a lot of people are doing is they're trying to hide those gains they get on online gambling uh, and maybe the losses too. They, the way it appears on a bank statement is it appears like you bought a product at a place when you invest, when you put money into an online gambling site. And that, that's the way the offshore places have it set up. And so they're trying to hide the money from the government because the, it's not legitimate. You know, online gambling in the United States, at least for most of the states, is not legitimate. So when you have countries coming out and saying that they're going to come up with a cryptocurrency tax plan, then that is making cryptocurrency legitimate. So I think that's really exciting news. Um, you know, we're really looking forward to hopefully seeing a bounce this week just in general. I hope that we're going to get back on the up and up. A lot of people have predicted that April will be a month where we start getting back on track. Of course, I think everybody's going to say that every single month until we do get back on track, which I believe that we will. So uh, if you guys have any comments about this video or anything you guys want to let us know, go ahead and drop it below. We'd love to talk to you about it. We'll you know, definitely respond to you and uh, you know, give you our two cents on things. So that is your daily crypto news.